doing? Hey guys, this is SPI 1.3 classifying matter as pure substances or mixtures based on composition. So we've been talking about matter. Matter is a solid, a liquid, or a gas. And now we're going to talk about whether or not they're a pure substance, meaning nothing is uh, mixed with them, or if they're mixtures, meaning something is mixed with them. And we're going to do that based on their composition. What is make What makes them up? So first, we know all matter exists as pure substances or mixtures. And maybe you've not really given that any thought before, so maybe you didn't really know it, but think about that. A solid, liquid, or gas, is it made up of only one thing or is it made up of several things? Elements are pure substances that cannot, 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 underlined shouty caps, be broken or separated into simpler substances by physical or chemical means. So these elements on this periodic table, they are in the simplest form. You cannot break them down any further. Carbon and oxygen, they're always carbon and oxygen. You can't break them in, down into something else. But CO2 can be broken down. What can be broken down into? It can be broken into carbon and oxygen. They are as low as they go. Pure substances are made up only of one kind of particle. Particles are atoms. Are atoms. Not atom. Atoms. Anyways. Again, you cannot separate elements. They are what they are. But they can be chemically combined, which is what I just told you. Carbon is always carbon. Oxygen is always oxygen. You can't break them down any lower. You can chemically combine them and get carbon dioxide, but you can't make them any lower or any more simple when they are carbon by itself and oxygen by itself. Elements are classified into three types. They're classified into metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. So you can see that um, metals oops, make up the majority of the periodic table. I mean, look at all of them. And then you have your nonmetals, which is a smaller portion, and then your small list portion is metalloids. They're the purple ones. I'll talk more about them in a minute. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about all of them. So we're going to talk about the characteristics of elements and how we tell them apart. And elements are characterized by properties that help determine what each element is. Um, that's in the wrong spot. On this next sentence, I have messed it all up, so be prepared for that. It does not insert the word depend on, insert the word the, the amount of the element, okay? It will not include mass, volume, or weight. That's not how we characterize these elements. But it does include the boiling point, the melting point, Reactivity or non-reactivity with another substance, meaning if you mix it together, is it going to explode or is it going to fizz or is it going to do nothing? And density. And these are just some of the characteristics that we use to determine what each element is. Um, but we don't, we're, we don't use mass or volume or weight. Uh, 100 grams of cold bolt is always going to melt at 1495 degrees celsius whether it's 100 grams or if it's 10 grams the melting point is always going to be the same its density is always going to be 8.9 grams per centimeters cubed whether it's 100 grams or whether it's 10 grams that's always going to be the same so the mass of it does not play a part. It's these other things that play a part in determining which each element is. So when we talk about metals, 
you know what a metal looks like. It's usually shiny and bright. Um, metals are also good conductors of heat and electricity. They're malleable, meaning they can bend or be molded. Gold is an example, and it is copper. You know, think about any movies you've seen or something where they're panning for gold or looking for gold or they've stolen gold and they bite it and if it bends, they're like, oh, that's real gold. And if it doesn't bend, then they know it's um, pyrite and they've been had. That's an example. Metals are soft and malleable. Non-metals are dull. They're poor conductors of heat and electricity. And they're brittle, which means they break easy. Example, examples are sulfur and carbon and selenium. So if you remember the periodic table, the metals were the green section. The non-metals were like the orange on the right-hand side. And then we have the very few, the purple ones in the middle, were metalloids. Metalloids are shiny or dull. They're tricky like that. They're semiconductors, so that means they're somewhat good at conducting heat and electricity, but they're not great. And they're somewhat malleable, meaning they're somewhat bendable. You have to work a little harder to bend those. Um, examples would be silicon, germanium. Um, those would be two examples. Sometimes you have pure substances that are compounds, and what that means is they're made up of only one kind of particle, but they can be separated, but only chemically. So, for example, if we are talking about water, water is always made up of hydrogen and oxygen, it's always made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen, and it's still considered a pure substance because it's those two without anything else. Pure substances are composed of two or more elements chemically combined. Um, then they are combined not by, re by reacting. Well, they are, but they're also combined by a reaction. So... Carbon, 12 carbons, 12 high, oh no, 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens is table sugar. It's the stuff you sprinkle in or put in your tea or sprinkle on your cereal or put in, I don't know, it's sugar. You eat it. Um, that's always going to make sugar. So, and that's formed by a chemical reaction. So I wrote reaction twice. Okay. So characteristics. Um, you're, they're joined together in a specific ratio, which we just talked about. There are always two parts of hydrogen, and there's always one part of oxygen in a water molecule. So it doesn't matter. It's always going to be the same ratio. So that is the combination or a characteristic of a pure substance compound. Another interesting thing about these is that every element has its own set of qualities or characteristics when they're elements. And then we're going to take them and we're going to chemically combine them. And now, to make the life more confusing, is it's going to take on a whole other set of properties. So, these elements have unique sets of properties different from the original element. Oh, that's, I just gave away a really important thing I was working up to here. Hold on. So, like, hydrogen has certain characteristics and oxygen has certain characteristics. And once you chemically combine them, guess what? Now they're water. And so, they... Water has its own set of characteristics. This, this is like, this blows my mind. Sodium, by itself. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, I messed it up, I messed it up. Hold up. Oh, I really messed it up. 
Oh, no. Hang on. Okay. Sorry about that technical difficulty. I think I fixed it. Anyway, so what I was saying was each of these elements separately have their own set of characteristics. And sometimes they're quite scary. Like, sodium is a flammable metal. Flammable metal. Okay? Not something you want to eat. Chlorine? Ha! Huh, it's a poisonous gas. Who wants to eat that? Right? Well, guess what? You combine them and we get salt. Stuff we eat all the time. We eat this. It's in everything. But separately, not such a great idea. Not going to eat the flammable metal. Not going to eat the poisonous gas. Combine them chemically. Poof! They have their own set of unique properties. And sometimes we eat them. Science. Isn't it amazing? All right. Next video is going to be about mixtures. Everything in this video has been about elements and compounds and pure substances. Next video, mixtures. Salt is a pure substance. Scary substance, but still pure substance.